Hello everyone. Now, I got a comment. Height 1 voltage 1 rule says we need to know more about the gate driver for the IGBT. How to hook it up and how it works. So today, we're going to take a look at that. So a gate driver is basically this for an IGBT. It's basically a half bridge. And usually, we have a P channel and an N channel transistor with a common input. Because the IGBT's gate is a capacitor, it needs to be charged up with positive voltage, and then it needs to be discharged. And it may even be discharged with negative voltage. So this is typically what it looks like. But, in a standard gate driver, usually will have some form of isolation because the IGBT works at such high voltages. And it usually ends up looking something like this. It's in a discrete package and it has the half bridge shown at the top, top right, and the opto isolator in the middle and top left. An LED usually activates a photo transistor or another photoresponsive device that will activate the half bridge. Now when the LED is on, usually the upper transistor will turn on. And when the LED turns off, usually this transistor will turn on. And they're never on, both at the same time. Now if you notice for a moment, the internal schematic of a 555 timer, the output stage is very similar. It is also a half bridge, and it can also be used to drive some very small IGBTs although no isolation will be provided. What's more common is to use a gate driver like this. This is HCPL3120, which is very similar. Inside it has a half bridge, and it has an opto isolator, and it has an LED. So when the LED turns on, the upper transistor there will activate, and it will send 15 volts to the IGBT. When this transistor is activated, the LED must be off. And that will short out the IGBT's gate and emitter terminals through the gate resistor. So in a typical application, it would look something like this. We would have the IGBT here with the output through the gate resistor connected to the gate and the negative power supply from the lower stage connected to the emitter. And that gives us basically an on pulse and an off pulse. But there is another technique used for very fast switching and for noise immunity called negative gate drive. This is negative gate drive. There are two power supplies in series and the emitter of the IGBT connected there in the middle and the gate connected to the output. So when the LED turns on this transistor will activate and will charge up the gate capacitor with positive voltage. When the LED turns off this is disabled and this is activated which will cause a current from the lower power supply to pull the gate voltage down to 5 volts below. This can be usually up to 30 volts across both of them so we can get a 15 volts on pulse and a 15 volts off pulse. So we can drive the IGBT very quickly and ensure that it stays off when it's supposed to be off. So, if we want to use the IGBT to run a direct current load like a light bulb or a direct current motor, this is the way that it will be hooked up. The gate driver output there, terminals 7 and 8 will be connected to the IGBT's gate terminal G2. The lower 5 terminal will be connected to the IGBT's emitter E2. And the 2 and 3 terminals are connected to the LED and they can be connected to any source that will turn the LED on and off. 
And it's really that simple. It's just a matter of turning the LED on and off. And this, of course, would be where we connect the load. That's what it looks like on paper. Let's take a look in real life what it looks like. Okay, so these are two HCPL 3120 gate drivers hooked up. And these are the terminal pinouts. There's the LED there and there between those two. This is a resistor for the LED so we don't get an overcurrent in the LED. Here's the capacitor for the input. This will be where the negative hooks up, power supply. This will be where the positive hooks up in the power supply. These are gate resistors. Just between pin 6 and 7, the two gate resistors. And they're linked together on the output. So I have the power supply positive here, power supply negative here. And these terminals, the black one there, where the power supply negative connects will be connected to the emitter. And the blue one, which is connected on 6 and 7, will be connected to the IGBT gate terminal. So, on the IGBT itself, trying to get out of the way of the light, and if we can focus, we have E2 and G2. So if you're using that as a chopper, See if I can get this right. It's hard. Hard to see it looking through the camera. That's A2. And that would be G2. And if you're using it as a chopper, these two we would short out. We'd have the positive connecting there, negative connecting there, capacitor, positive, negative then hook up the power source, this would be the output. You hook your load negative here, and the load positive there. And that's the way the chopper works. So, this is the setup in the real world. We have the 555 timer, connected as a pulse width modulation, and the gate driver connected up just how we described, and just how it is in the diagram. On the 8 pin, the capacitor is positive, and on the 5 pin, the capacitor is negative, and pins 2 and 3 are the LED. And the LED is being driven by the 555 timer. So it's really pretty simple. And the output, of course, is going to the IGBT module, and the power source for the gate driver power supply is the computer power supply red and the blue wire, and for the timer is the red and black wire. So, we have the output up on the scope, and then we'll start the timer, and you will see the pulse width modulation. Now, if you wanted to use the IGBTs in half-bridge configuration to drive a coil like this, then the gate driver schematic would look a little bit like that. We'd have two of the gate drivers and two separate power supplies. Because we are working with high voltages, we need to have the power supply separated. So, one half-bridge driving the IGBT on the top, one half-bridge driving the IGBT on the bottom. For the IGBT half bridge, the output would look something like that. Now, all we need to do is make these LEDs alternate. When this one's off, we want to have that one on. And we can do that with the 555 timer. As we can see, the 555 timer has the half bridge output staged by itself. So if we have a capacitor connected to the positive here, connected in a capacitor, another one connected in series to the negative here, 
Then in the middle, we can connect between the two center capacitor, the center of the two capacitors, and the output terminal, the 555, and it will drive both of them. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here's the setup with the two gate drivers, and the 555 timer, and here we have the input from the computer power supply, five volts, and we've got two capacitors connected in series. Negative here of this capacitor will go to the negative, be connected in series with this one. The positive of this one will go to the positive of this power supply. The middle there is connected to that white wire. That's the center between those two of those. And then this will be the output from the 555 timer. The 555 timer Negative also connected to the negative power supply, positive also connected to the positive. So between there and there, we should have alternating current. And the gate driver, while one anode, the LED in this one will be hooked to this side, the cathode will be hooked to this side, and then it's the opposite of this one, it's reverse. So they're in anti-parallel. The anode of this one will be connected to the cathode of this one. The cathode of this one will be connected to the anode of this one, so they're opposite. So when we get alternating current out of the 555 timer, this one will turn on when it's positive, and this one will turn on when it's negative. So the output of that timer on the oscilloscope will look like that. Got almost two volts going up and two volts going down, alternating current. So let's hook up the gate drivers to the IGBT and we'll see if we can get alternating current from the half bridge IGBT. Okay, so I have both gate drivers hooked up and anti parallel, like we said, to the timer, two capacitors, and we have to have the isolated power supply for the gate drivers. That's what's making all that noise. In the capacitor bank, I install the wire up here onto the center point of these two. So between here and here, and all those, the middle point there is connected to this output here. And then the other end here is connected to the common terminal on the IGBT. We have the scope and a light on it. And the scope, we can see we're tracing the alternating current with the two IGBTs. So, now that we have that running, let's see if we can do something a little more fun with it besides just run the light. So, there you are. Now if you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to ask. Message me, comment, whatever. And I'll try to make it as clear as possible. Thanks for watching. See you soon.